The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Old Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. George? Chino, Luke? I'm sorry, I... I can't talk to you right now, George. I'm in an awful hurry. Where's Amos? <clears throat> He's in the barn. <laughs> well, see you later. <laughs> oh, hi, Amos. Hi, George. Say, that boy's sure busy. Well, he's got to. I stepped down. Luke's running the farm now, you know. <laughs> What you got in your mind, George? Oh, nothing much. I just stopped by to, 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 to... Say, did I hear right? Did you say that Luke was running the farm? You hit right. I'm going to do something I should have done years ago. I'm letting Luke use as much head as he, as he has. <laughs> Amos. Amos, I'm proud of you letting the boy take over. You know, I noticed a change for the better the minute I saw him. Responsibility. Yeah. That's what makes a man. Well, you know, I got to realize how dependent he was on me, and I just figured it's about time he started giving orders and making decisions. It's time he took over. <laughs> Grandpa! Grandpa! Yeah, Luke! Luke! Oh, Grandpa! Just taking a breather, Luke. I've been tidying up the barn like you ordered me. <laughs> oh? Oh, yeah! Yeah, oh, it looks fine. Look, Grandpa, the strawberries is ready. George, we never had such a bumper crop. We'll start to pick them first thing tomorrow morning. Did you call about them strawberry boxes like I asked you? Oh, look what I done. Well, what's the matter? I meant to tell you. They didn't have the kind of boxes you like, so I ordered them direct from the factory, and they won't be here for three or four days. I'm real sorry, Luke. Oh, well, that's all right, Grandpa. You know, now that I take a second look at these berries, they're, they're still kind of green. In three or four days, they'll be just ready to pick. Well, now you're thinking, Luke. You remember Mr. Rayfield wants them berries dead ripe when he frees them at his plant. Oh, I better tell Mr. Rayfield to send his truck out here toward the end of the week. Yeah, well, you don't need to do that, Luke. You see, I was uh, talking to Mr. Rayfield on the phone the other day. I, I called him about his cold, and, and uh, we got to talk about berries, and I told him I wouldn't be ready for the end of the week. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to call him anyway, Grandpa. See, uh, him and me got to have a little uh, understanding about the price. I ain't going to sell these berries for less than $3.50 a crate. Now, you're dead right, Luke. Yeah. Thank you, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, but Luke, <laughs> we could come out on them all right if we were to take the 315 the credits off on everybody. Because if you don't sell it to, to Rayfield, well, you just don't sell. Well, I guess if all the other farmers is taking it, we'll have to, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's whatever you say, Luke. <laughs> I thought you told me you was letting Luke run things. You hit him, didn't you? Now, Amos, you can't put that boy in your knee and work him like a puppet. It ain't fair. George, I can't stand here join with you. I got work to do. I stomped in your bunion, didn't I, Amos? If it's all the same to you, George, I'm busy. I gotta do this tidying up like Luke ordered me to do. Now, Luke's out of earshot. She can't hear you. You can stop that now. <laughs> George, I tell you, Luke's running things around here. Running things? Huh? Running what? You know, George, you're getting to be a terrible nag. <laughs> yeah. uh, I should have known you'd never give up being the big cheese around here. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? Leave town, I suppose. I never said that, Amos. Well, what do you want me to do? Me? I don't want you to do nothing. Yes, you do, too, God darn it. You're working like a puppet, stepping on your butt. Hey, hey, Miss, this is your farm. Luke's your grandson, and I ain't telling you what to do. You're done right, Change. And I ain't running off someplace just so Luke can prove what kind of stuff he's made out of me. Of course, Change. Where would I go, anyways? God darn it, George. Why don't you mind your own business and get on out of here? All right, so long. Now, you wait a minute. You talk me into it. I'm going to tell Luke I'm going out of town. 
But I ain't really going nowhere. And you going along with me. <laughs> sure gonna miss you. Ain't gonna seem the same without you yelling and carrying on around here. Little when you're vice fair of the loyal order of the Miss Nile and they send you to Sacramento on a secret mission, you don't ask questions. You just go. <laughs> Say, Grandpa, if, if you don't know what hotel you're gonna be staying at up in Sacramento, how are we gonna be able to call you in case something comes up? Well, my feeling about that is, look... <laughs> uh, you do just like you would if I was here, only you weren't paying no attention to me. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, I packed a lunch in case you get hungry on the train. Well, thank you, Kate. Train? Well, I thought you said you was going to take the bus. Bus? Well, you told me you was going to Sacramento on the plane. <laughs> Grandpa, there's something funny here. Is something wrong? No, they ain't. I told them three stories for a reason. What reason? Well, in case anybody talked, I didn't want to be trailed on my secret mission by no odd fellas or yelps or such like. <laughs> yeah, well, Bye. 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 Have a nice trip. Bye. Bye, Grandpa. Well, looks like I'm it. <laughs> the entire boss. In charge of everything. Complete. Luke, phone's ringing. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you answer it. Huh? You heard me. Go get it. <laughs> Now, sugar babe, I don't want you to act as if anything's changed at all. But if you got any problems, you just feel free to come to me. Hello? <laughs> it's for Grandpa. It's Mr. Bunker. You know, the farm about two miles up the road. He says it's real important. Oh, yeah. Hello, Mr. Bunker. Uh, this is Luke McCoy. Yeah, well, Grandpa's gone. He'll be away for about a week. If it's anything important, you can tell me. Yeah. What? Brayfield dropped the price of strawberries to two seventy-five a crate. But we couldn't make out. It'd be three months' work for nothing. All the farmers are getting together and are going to hold out unless he raises his price. But what if Mr. Rayfield holds out and the strawberries fall? We'll be ruined. Yeah. Well, I'd have to ask Grandpa. I know he's gone. Well, of course I can make a decision. Yeah, and I'll make one right now. I'll have to think about it, and I'll call you back in about an hour. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, let's get in the car and go down to the depot and catch Grandpa. Which depot? Train, bus, plane, or streetcar? <laughs> Perfect score. Hit every pothole in the road. <laughs> Get in the house before somebody sees you. I don't want the news getting around. You're at my house instead of Sacramento. Oh. What's the matter, Amos? I better get back on home, George. Something's happening. Oh, Amos. Guy's ass is on the way. Special delivery. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got the McCoy Crick in my back. When that comes on, it's a sign something's wrong. <laughs> the only thing wrong with your back, you've been cramped up in the floor of the car. George, you don't question the McCoy trick. <laughs> Just pack up and head for high ground. <laughs> and what are you going to say to Luke? Look, I made off like I had to take a little trip so you could run the farm. But the truth is I ain't got no confidence in you. Not even for ten minutes. So I'll come back. Get in the car. Get in the car. Pain just went away. Luke, you've got to talk to Mr. Bunker sooner or later and give him an answer. But I don't know what to say to him. Why did Grandpa have to be away now? For years you've been saying what you would have done with this farm if it was up to you. Well, now it is up to you. Yes, it is. You're the head of the McCoys now. Whatever you say, go. All right. Tell him I'm not in. Hello? This is Kate, Mr. Bunker. Luke? No, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Yes, yes, he's here. Just a minute, I'll call. Luke? Look, Kate, I 
I'd like to stick with Mr. Bunker and the rest of the farmers, but you know how Rayfield is. He'll hold out until the strawberries and us are ruined. What would Grandpa do? Look, you've got to stop running to Grandpa for everything. What you decide to do, you've got to do it. That's more important than the strawberries or anything else. Hello, Mr. Bunker. This is Luke McCoy. Mr. Bunker, I'd rather let our berries rot in the boxes than let that miserable skin flint get the best of us. You are worried about me? Ha! I'm with you all the way. <laughs> We have apples, grapes, bananas, pie, pears, milk, and cake. Now, what else can I get for you? Well, I don't think I'll have nothing, Georgie. Hey, much we can't play checkers without snacking. Why, it takes half the fun out of it. <laughs> yeah, but I've had a long, hard day, and if it's all the same to you, uh, I think I'll go to bed. Hey, but you can't start worrying, can you? Look, we're only five minutes away. Now, I can always drop over there and see how things are. Now, quit fretting. No, I ain't fretting, George. I'm just sleepy, that's all. I, I may not be asleep before I get to the door. I got something to say to him. Is something on your mind, Mr. Rayfield? They most certainly is. Now listen to me, McCoy. I know all about what's going on. And if you think you can make old Bert Rayfield back down, you forget it, because you haven't got a chance. Haven't got a chance, huh? <laughs> he says we haven't got a chance. You should have a lot of fun together. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Rayfield. You're through taking advantage of us farmers. You're going to give us a fair price or else. Now, look at here, sonny boy. You're fighting City Hall and you can't win. You ought to know that. All right, Rayfield, I'm telling you something now. Even if we all go bankrupt, even if we all go to the poorhouse, we still ain't going to take your starvation prices, and I'm still laughing. <laughs> Ain't nothing like a happy home. <laughs> hmm? yeah, well, you be on your knees first. Goodbye. Kate, we're ruined. <laughs> By jingles. George was right. I was worrying over nothing at all. <laughs> This is George. Who's this? Oh, uh, George, this is Luke. Look, can you tell me where Grandpa's staying in Sacramento? Yeah, I'd like to get in touch with him. If you're worrying about him, don't. Uh, your grandpa's probably having the best time of his life. No, no, it ain't Grandpa I'm worried about, George. It's us. What's that? Look, Rayfield's cut our price for berries down from three fifteen to two seventy five a crate. Well, if that. <laughs> Well, ain't that interesting. Us farmers has got together to hold a price, but, well, if Rayfield don't give up, and, and it looks like he won't, well, we're going to be ruined. You don't say. Personal call, George? Yeah. Female? Uh -huh. Ask if she got a girlfriend. <laughs> say, about that uh, friend of yours, uh, isn't there something you could do? Friend? Oh, you mean Rayfield? Oh, no, no, nothing. No, George. No, I gave the McCoy word. I can't back down now. No, George, we're in terrible shape. Hey, you try to figure something out, and I'll try to figure something out, too. 
George, I'm desperate. I need Grandpa. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. He's something all right. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. Uh, honey? <laughs> honey? <laughs> You're something all right. Thank you, George. You're something too, George. Uh, Amos, yeah, George. I'd like to ask you a question. Anything, George. Well, now, suppose you was at home, see? And Rayfield come over to talk about the price of strawberries. Oh, not now, George. No business, no. Remember, I'm on a vacation. Wait till I get back from Sacramento. <laughs> but, uh, uh, now, supposing instead of offering you three fifteen for the berries, he only offered you two seventy five. What would you do? <laughs> Why, well, I'd tell him I'd starve for I'd sell him at that price. You would. <laughs> you bet I would. And I'd tell all the other farmers not to sell them neither. <laughs> oh, what a relief. You Why? That's exactly what Luke did. What? Ain't you proud of him? What do you mean that's exactly what Luke done? Well, now he called me this morning before you got up and he said that he and the other farmers wasn't going to give in, see? Uh, even if the strawberries rot. Why, he's took and leave his senses. We'd be ruined. But Amos, you said that... Now, George McMichael, this is all your fault. You're the one who got me to put that poor little ignorant boy into the head of the McCoys. And I ain't had one minute's rest from worry since I've been over here. <laughs> <clears throat> what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my family out of the ruinous position you done put them in. I'm going to call Rayfield and I'm going to throw myself on his mercy. You wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. You can't do this to look. Now, he gave the McCoy word he'd hold out. Now, I'm the head of the McCoys and it ain't official till I give it. <laughs> now, you better get me home just as fast as you can, you god darn Jezebel. <laughs> I'm going to try and save my family. pretty much aware of what this thing has got you into. But I am going to give you one last chance to bail yourselves out before your berries rot. And it's not going to be at 275 a crate. I'm going to give you two bucks flat, take it or leave it. What's all the cars doing here? Maybe the farmers are having some kind of a meeting. Good. I'll show who's talking to the McCoys. Now, take it easy, Amos. Now, take it easy. Well, gentlemen, what's it going to be? I haven't got much time. Either you sell me your berries at $2 a crate or they rot. There's not a thing you can do about it, and you know it. Well, I hate to say it, boys, but I'm afraid he's got us. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. You ain't gonna let him get away with this. You can't mean it. What else are we gonna do? What we all decided. We gotta stick together. Rayfield's got a big freezing plant. He must have a lot of orders that he can't fill, otherwise he wouldn't be here. He needs our strawberries. Now, don't give in. <laughs> Gentlemen, I think I'll be going. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Rayfield. Luke, I'm sorry, but I just can't take a chance. I got a wife and family to think of. I bought a new tractor. I've got payments that I gotta meet. Now you're talking sense. Well, Amos, looks like they're all on your side. We gotta hold out. <clears throat> Grandpa! Oh, am I glad you're here. Well, now, look. I've been standing out there on the porch listening, and... I know pretty much what's going on here. <laughs> tell him, Grandpa. Tell him. Now, look, McCoy, you ain't going to change things neither. I want an answer now. Well, now, Mr. Rafe, you don't get mad at me because I'm on your side. Well, fine. What is what's the matter with Amos? <laughs> you see, today it's the squeezes and the squoozing. And we're the squoozing. That's because we're farmers. In the natural order of things, farmers has always had a place reserved from at the tail end of the line. Oh, I can't believe it's you talking. <laughs> You have to sort of excuse Luke. You see, he's young. And he, well, he ain't had his self-respect drained out of him. But just give him time and he'll be along with the rest of us. Now, wait a minute, Amos McCoy. I got a lot of self-respect. Yeah, hold on, Amos. Just because we're farmers don't mean we're cowards. Well, we're too smart to 
buck up against a, a big man like Mr. Rayfield here, we got to sort of knuckle under to him. <laughs> no, sir, no, sir, we will not. No, sir. No, no. Impossible. Well, there's your answer, Mr. Rayfield. We ain't selling. Well, gentlemen, if you want to go broke, that's up to you. Goodbye. Do you mean you let me walk out of here and lose your crop? Open the door from Luke. But, Grandpa, you, you just said... I know, I was wrong and you was right. You just learned me a lesson, boy. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. This is a case of mob hysteria, and I'm not going to stand by and see you gentlemen destroy yourselves. So we'll forget about that $2 a crate, and I'll give you two and a half. Open the door wider from Luke. <laughs> $275. We ain't accepting that offer. Right, Luke? Right. All right, 315. It's a deal, Luke? It's a deal. It's a deal. Hands <laughs> off now, the berries will be delivered. Well, get them berries over there before they rot. Hey, Mercy! <laughs> Well, I guess that just goes to show that I ain't quite ready to handle everything by myself just now, wait yet. wait a minute, son. Wait a minute. You've done all right. And just as soon as you get a little more sneakiness, why, well, you'll be as upstanding and straightforward as I be. 